Hey everybody, this is Mike. I hope you're having a great day. Mike Kai from Inspire Church. Welcome to our Deep Dive Wednesday. If this is your very first time, I want to welcome you on behalf of Inspire Church. All of the thousands of people who are gathered, imagine that, and all of the Zoom groups that are coming together and connect groups. I'm so, so grateful and so glad that you're with us on Deep Dive Wednesday. Hope your week is going excellent. I want to recap this past weekend's message. We talked about Eutychus in Acts chapter 20 and what an incredible story of a young man that fell out of a windowsill and the power of God came upon him when Paul came upon his body and prayed over him and he was raised back to life again. And I think that's something that is a picture of our government, our society, and even our very own lives. We're coming back to life again. And so God is restoring some things in our lives. I don't know what this COVID has been for you. I don't know, it runs the gamut from people who have struggled, have gone through very, very difficult times through this. And uh, I'm thankful for the church being able to help people financially. I'm thankful for our church that has handed out and made thousands of, I mean, hundreds of masks, serving people in all kinds of different ways that we never expected to, to happen. And as we begin to re-engage and to begin to reopen, even though we were never closed, only the doors were open, the church was always there, always operating. We were the church that was gathered, now became scattered. And now how do we regather and re-engage again? And I just want to say it's not quickly. Um, I don't think you do it that way. As a matter of fact, I think there is a deliberate, slow, and and, and purposeful role back into how church will be from the future, from this moment on. You know, I also want you to realize this, and um, we all know that it's not going to go back to pre-COVID days. That may take a year to get there, maybe six months, hopefully, in Jesus' name. It may be faster, maybe a miracle, but it's not going to be the same. From social distancing to masks, to kids, to children, and taking care of all of those needs and being considerate of our kids as well as our kupuna, there is some things that we make we need to make sure that we do the right way but now when we re-engage of something that was seemed to be dead but actually was living what we're looking at is how do we re-engage into church once again and i think it happens not in the building but it happens with us first what are we like before we engage so it could be like this right it could be you could move to another city and another state but if you still haven't changed before you moved you're still taking your same problems with you and eventually it's going to rear its ugly head and you're going to have to deal with the same things that you've been dealing with over and over again, right? So we all know that. It's the same thing with coming back into church. When we come back, when you come back, when I come back, I want to be bigger, better, stronger than ever before. But I realize it's not going to be the same. It will be different. So how do we look at this? The first thing is it's our posture. I want to concentrate not on where we're sitting because I believe you're sitting in a good spot right now. You're watching online. That's a great spot to be. I'm not worried about you necessarily losing your passion or falling asleep like Eutychus did in the building. Not worried about that. I'm more concerned about how our posture is from this moment on. How do we live with the right posture? Because everybody's watching our posture. They're watching how we posture. Are we posturing ourselves? Or is our posture solid and is our core good? So out of that message, about the message of Eutychus falling out of the house and the many flickering lamps and all that light and all that love in that atmosphere, it's still quite possible that every now and then we can get bent out of shape and we can lose our posture. So here it is, number one. How do we keep our posture that fosters growth? Number one, keep our eyes and our ears open. In other words, it's receptivity. See, we can always be listening and watching and all of that can be background music or background noise, can it? It can often be that, but we're not receptive. We're listening, but we're not really hearing, right? Or we're watching, but not really seeing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, verse 16, He said, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. And I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. Jesus was talking to them about them seeing Jesus and hearing Jesus. What a privilege and honor it was, right? In that day, in order to hear Jesus and see Jesus, he said, blessed are you, all the prophets longed for these days, but you get to hear it. And you and I, and, and you and I we get to live in these times that are different and they called them unprecedented from the very beginning. It set precedence, it's different than ever before. But in the meantime, with all the chaos and all the ambiguity and everything that's going on in our world, we have to be more perceptive and receptive than anybody else is. 
So why do we have that ability? Because we are attuned to the Holy Spirit. Because what you see isn't always what's going on, and what you hear isn't always the real story. So let's make sure that we are spiritually attuned, and our feed is really feeding on the feast of the Word of God more than any other feed that is coming through our televisions and through our phones. Number one, keep your eyes and your ears open. Here's number two, keep your arms up. Keep your arms up. In other words, that's our worship. The first one is our receptivity. The second one is our worship. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 6 says this, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems life from the pit, and crowns you with the love of compassion, who satisfy your desires with good things, so that you, your youth, is renewed like the eagles. Praise God with your innermost being. Now is the time that our posture is a posture of worship. Not a posture of defeat, not a posture of complaining, not a posture of fear, but our posture is one of receptivity and worship. Now more than ever before, worship ascribes worth-ship, that He is worthy to be praised. And it is in the moments of our lives, we are more dependent on God than ever before to worship Him. It is those times that we realize that we are shifting our posture from it's all about us to now it's all about God. And when it's all about Him and no longer about us, He makes it about us. That's what I believe with all of my heart. So come on, let's be ever hearing and ever perceiving and ever seeing and ever receptive to what God has to say. Let's make sure that we are offering Him the best worship we've got and surrender to Him and be reliant on Him more than ever before. You know, I love worship. I wanted to be a worship leader um, versus a pastor. I thought I was called to be a worship leader. As a matter of fact, I remember teaching myself how to play the guitar, found all the chords, played it till my, played it till my fingers bled. It was the summer of 69. No, Brian Adams right there. But I did literally play it till my fingers bled. And it was the first year that Lisa and I got married when I picked up the guitar. And I'm still playing the piano. I want you to know, everybody, one day I am going to play the piano. Uh, so I'm still playing it. It's in, my, it's in my, my office at home. But I want to tell you this. I love worship. I love worship. And there can be times when I just put on a worship song and all I can do is just cry. I mean, not ugly cry, but like cry. Like just tears. And that's when I know I'm still alive. That my heart hasn't gotten hardened over this or I haven't been overly protective over my heart to the point where you can't penetrate God. And that's what I want. I want to have a heart of worship that worships Him and praises Him. You know, there's a difference between worship and praise. You know, praise is making a joyful noise and getting excited. And I think we need more praise songs. We got a lot of great worship songs. Worship, worship songs are deep. They're meaningful. They can be wordy. Uh, they're poetic. They're prophetic. I love those. But man, sometimes you, sorry, sometimes there's just a good old praise song that gets the blood going and gets you all jumped up and excited to lift him up and to worship him. I think that's when we begin to praise him and we offer and ascribe worthiness to him because he's worthy to be praised. And can I tell you this? That the more you worship him, the more your problems diminish, the more you get a right perspective and your posture begins to change when you worship him. And I think the most important posture that we could ever find ourselves in worship is on our knees. On our knees. When was the last time you were able to get on your knees? Maybe right now in your living room. Maybe right now in your study, in your office, or wherever you are right now in your bedroom. Right now, go on your knees. I would go on my knees, but the camera can't follow me. I would, but the camera can't follow me because I'm in a room all by myself and they've all abandoned me. They could not tarry with me one hour. The cameraman is gone. But I can tell you this, if I was in my room right now and this is a call to worship, I would be on my knees right now and I'd be worshiping Him. Because you know why? He has gotten us this far, everybody. He has gotten us this far. And while the world is empty, and looking for answers and wondering what is going on in this world. We know who's holding this world. He's got the whole world in His hands, everybody. And so to honor Him, to worship Him, to be on our knees and even to pray is the best posture of all. Somebody say amen. Amen. The third thing is this, to keep the best posture that fosters growth. Number three <clears throat> is keep your hands out. 
Keep your hands out in generosity. Keep your hands out in generosity. Keep your hands open and keep your hands out. Proverbs 11 verse 24 in the message said, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. There's a second part to that. But think about this for a moment. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. In other words, the generous person's life has more influence, has more opportunity, and has so much more. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. But then it says that the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Have you ever seen the life of a miser? A miser is normally going to be a loner. A miser is going to be, uh, a loner isn't always a miser, but a miser is almost always a loner. That's when their lack of generosity, hoarding, always keeping everything to themselves. Because why? Because they're afraid that they're going to lose it. And when you're afraid that you're going to lose it, uh, that's when you are actually losing it. <laughs> Think about this for a moment. When COVID hit, let me tell you, week one, week two, week three, week four, um, people were hitting up our church, different pastors, different leaders. What are you doing? How do you do it? Can you help us? Can I tell you, we had a great recipe for success. And a stingy pastor or leader would have said, no, you go figure it out yourselves. Or no, you know, I'll help you only this much. But you know what? We were generous. We, we helped. We spent time. We lost sleep helping other churches because that's what, who we are. That's what we do. And we love them. And we want to help them because we want somebody to help us when we need the help one day. And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what we did. And you know what? I'm sure our world's gotten larger. Opportunities coming our way. I'm sure we're going to get an other situations where God's going to bless us, but we were not doing it because we're looking for the blessing. We're just doing it to be a blessing. There's a difference. You don't give to get blessed. You give because you are blessed. There is a massive revelation for some of you right now. Because some of you right now, you're going like, uh, where's it all going? What are they doing with it? I, I, I'm of the mentality that goes, here it is. Make it work. Here it is. Milk it for all it's worth. Leverage this thing. Go reach more people. Go expand the kingdom of God. And it's not necessarily that you are giving because you are blessed. You give because you are a blessing. And that's how we do it. So let's remember that keep your hands out. And right now, during this time, even if your income, income has fluctuated, I stay true to the Lord as much as possible. Stay true. Stay true. In the valleys and, wait, in, the valleys and in the peaks. In, in, in a declining economy and in a rising economy. And you know what? I just refuse to participate in the world's economy. This, you know, well, you, you, aren't you buying stuff, Pastor Mike? Aren't you going grocery shopping? Yeah, I am. That's not what I meant. In other words, I'm not going to let this church participate in a recession or a depression because I refuse to participate. Now, how are, we, how are we doing that? We're doing all the right things. We're saving all the right money. We've totally readjusted our budget. We've done everything that we need to do, and, we, and if it happens again, we'll do it again. We'll do it again and again. But I'm not participating. I'm not letting my mind go there. Because you know why? Because I believe that I'm trusting in the Lord, that He's going to put us in safe pasture, that no matter what goes on around us, that you know what? God took care of us in 010. God's going to take care of us in 2020. Took care of us in 2001. And He's going to take care of us in 2030. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You know what? We haven't stopped any of our generosity as a church. We haven't pulled back on giving to the denominations. We haven't pulled back on giving to our networks. We have not stopped the flow of funds to all of our missionaries. Not, not, mm -mm, not at all. We have continued to kept the same level of generosity because God's been blessing us and we are a blessing. And that's what we want to do. Number four. Are you ready? Number four. Here it is. You got to stay on your toes. Stay on your toes. <clears throat> Readiness. Being ready. Being ready. The shoes of the gospel. Beautiful feet. As a matter of fact, number one, we keep our eyes open. That's our receptivity. Number two, we keep our arms op up. That's our worship. Number three, we keep our hands out. That's generosity. And number four, we stay on our toes. And that's our readiness. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter 3.15 says, says this. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. That's really key right there. Don't get on a soapbox. Don't stand on the corner, tell everybody they're going to hell. That's, that's horrendous. That's a, poor, that's a poor witness. 
If you ever see anybody in a soapbox on a corner doing something, telling everybody else, turn or burn, please, please get them off that box. Go talk to them. But we do it. We do it with love and we do it with gentleness and respect. So, first Peter, Peter says, now think about this. Peter, the same one who's a fisherman and took out his sword on the last night of Jesus, on the Passover night, the night that he was betrayed, takes out the sword and begins to defend Jesus with one fell swoop against Caiaphas's priestly guards. And what does he do? He cuts off the ear of Caiaphas's priest guard. Now think about that for a moment. How are you going to cut the ear off of a guard? You got to be really good. You got to be really good with a sword. Just let me just get your ear. Nope. He was going for the forehead, everybody, but he missed because he's a fisherman. So he glanced the head and cut off the ear. Jesus picks up the ear. In Hawaiian, it's called pepeal. Puts the pepeal back, puts the, put it right back on his head and heals his ear. Come on. Peter, open mouth, insert foot. That was his syndrome. Peter, come on, speak too early. Peter, take out the sword. Ask questions later. And now this is Peter. Years later, an older man, God's done a work on his life and says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that lies within you. But do it with gentleness and respect. Think about this for a moment. Always giving a reason for the hope that lies within you. Guys, even right now, people might be getting comfortable. Don't let them. Keep sending them messages. Keep forwarding them something for them to read. Keep sending them inspirechurch.live. Keep telling them to go back on YouTube and go watch all the previous messages or the Deep Dive Wednesday by Dr. Robi Sondarega last week. How amazing is that, right? He was incredible and that accent's pretty hot too. Think about that for a moment. All the different things that we can do to continue to be a light electronically, electronically. Because we're not going to see each other or we're not going to see as many people face to face, right? It's more electronically. So now more than ever, don't, don't let up. People are receptive. So our posture, receptivity, our worship, hands up, our generosity, our hands out in praise and in generosity. And the fourth one is this, <laughs> readiness. Stay on your toes to bring the good news. How beautiful are the feet that bring the good news. And when you bring the good news, you got beautiful feet. Doesn't matter what your feet look like. Doesn't matter if you have to do your own pedicures lately. Doesn't matter if your ladies, your husband did your pedicure, or your kids did your pedicure, or you, you never done your pedicure before, or maybe you need a pedicure, whatever it is. Um, but whatever it is, it says that you have beautiful feet when you bring the message of the good news of the gospel. So, as you break up into Zoom groups, I want to I want to pray for us and can God continue to bless us. And as we continue this roll back in to re-engage, stay patient, don't look to the right or to the left, stay on the path that God has for us. We follow His command for our church, His pillar of cloud, His pillar of fire for our church, okay? So we're going to stick with that and let's trust God, trust the leadership of the church, pray for us, please pray for us. Thank you for all of you who've been praying for us, all the staff, me and Lisa, <clears throat> our families, but please don't stop because we need it now more than ever. May the Lord bless you, keep you, turn His countenance toward you, cause His face to shine upon you, and grant you peace. That is the ironic blessing from Aaron that he spoke over the people in the wilderness. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. Have a great Deep Dive Wednesday. You know I love you. I'm your pastor. I'm so proud. I couldn't be prouder. I ain't going nowhere. This is, this is it. Thank you, everybody. God bless you.